Iran is likely tallying the costs of the Israeli airstrikes in retaliation for Tehran's massive October the 1st missile barrage on Israel. Among the targets that Israel appears to have gone after are Iran's prized Russian-made S-300 air defense systems, according to US and Israeli officials. Putting the Iranian S-300s out of action leaves the door open to follow-up strikes by Israel, including larger-scale direct attacks. This serves as both a contingent opportunity for the Israel Israel Defense Forces and a deterrent against a response from Iran. The Israeli ministry said it had targeted Iranian missile manufacturing sites and aerial defense systems in what appeared to be a highly calculated response that avoided critical energy infrastructure such as oil fields and nuclear facilities. The Iranian army said that two soldiers were killed in the strikes without clarifying where the deaths happened. The Iranian soldiers died confronting the projectiles of the criminal Zionist entity, a reference to Israel, the army said in a statement which was published on state media. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said on Sunday that Israel's strikes on Iran had severely damaged its defense capabilities without providing further details on what was targeted. Iran's ability to supply ballistic missiles to Russia has been hit by Saturday's Israeli strikes on weapons facilities across the Islamic Republic, according to The Telegraph. While the attack, involving more than 100 aircraft, targeted Iran's ability to strike Israel, it could also have serious repercussions for Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine. Satellite images showed some sites hit by Israel housed planetary mixers, which are used to make solid fuel for ballistic missiles. As a result, if Iran needs its own supply of missiles for fresh attacks on Israel, experts say it could now struggle to provide more projectiles to Russia due to a lack of fuel. The destruction of Iranian solid fuel planetary mixers could influence any Iranian decision to export solid fueled short range ballistic missiles to Russia if these missiles are regarded as being difficult to replace, said Siddharth Kaushal, senior research fellow at RUSI, the defense think tank. There are unconfirmed reports from Israel that some kind of follow-up operation might already have been prepared, with claims that government targets and infrastructure could be next, although Iranian nuclear facilities will apparently be spared for now. Considering how Saturday's airstrikes included significant softening up of Iranian air defenses, it is almost inevitable that Israel has several follow-up options already planned should Iran respond with another barrage according to the war zone. Russia's Republic of Chechnya has been targeted by drones for the first time since the start of Russia's full-fledged invasion of Ukraine over two years ago. Head of Chechnya Ramzan Kadyrov reported that a drone attack struck the Russian Special Forces University named after Vladimir Putin in the town of Guterms in the Republic at 6.30 in the morning. As a result of an unmanned attack on Tuesday, the roof of an empty building on the territory of the Russian Special Forces University caught fire. Kadyrov said in a post on Telegram channel that after the attack there were no casualties and the fire in the building was extinguished. The Chechen leader noted that investigators have already commenced their work to identify the culprits. The university has not suspended its operations, all services are functioning normally, he added. Earlier, Russia's defense ministry claimed that seven Ukrainian drones were shot down over three of the country's border regions, as well as over the Black Sea. The Russian University of Special Forces named after Vladimir Putin is the first and currently the only private educational institution in the Russian Federation to provide professional training for special units. The university was founded in August 2013 at the proposal of Ramzan Kadyrov.
North Korean soldiers are already in Russia and will begin military operations against Ukrainian troops in the coming days. This indicates that the North Korea is fully participating in the war with Ukraine, said the head of the Presidential Office of Ukraine, Andriy Yermak, in an interview with the Italian publication Corriere della Sera. He noted that he could not yet say how many people were involved and whether North Korean units could really change the course of the war. More detailed information was needed. However, according to Yermak, the North Korean military is completely changing the political scenario and meaning of the war caused by Russian aggression. De facto, we can say that North Korea is participating in this conflict. De jour, there was no official declaration of war from Pyongyang, but de facto, they joined the military aggression against our country, a conflict that has been going on for a decade. Yermak noted, he also stressed that it is not enough to simply stop the fighting. It is necessary to prevent further aggression, otherwise the Baltic and Balkan countries will be at risk. If Ukraine doesn't stop the invasion, they will be next. Answering a question about the possibility of asking NATO to send troops, Yermak emphasized that the Ukrainians are fighting themselves, of course, with the help of our partners, but on their own, and are doing so quite effectively. At the same time, he noted Ukraine needs a sufficient amount of weapons and financial support because only a strong and militarily secure Ukraine will be ready for serious negotiations with Russia. Thousands of North Korean troops are preparing to back Russian ruler Vladimir Putin in his war against Ukraine. The new soldiers are reportedly from North Korea's Special Operations Forces, the country's most capable military unit, and are likely to be deployed to Russia's Kursk region to try to retake the territory. However, Western analysts can only speculate on how effective these forces are against the backdrop of Ukraine's capable army, writes Phillips Payson O'Brien, professor of strategic studies at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, in an article for The Atlantic. Putin saw an opportunity to strengthen his hand in the war and took it, regardless of the Western backlash. He appears to be betting that the United States will not intervene directly. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin acknowledged that North Korea had joined Russia in the conflict, calling it a very serious problem. Since the start of the full-scale invasion, the United States has been hesitant to provide Ukraine with advanced weapons such as HIMARS, Abrams tanks, ATA CMS missiles, F-16 fighters and JASM long-range missiles. While these weapons were eventually provided, it was a waste of time that limited Ukraine's options. Moreover, the United States has never given a clear answer to the question of whether it would allow Western weapons to be used to strike Crimea, the Kirsch Bridge and other Russian targets outside of Ukraine.